West Metro crews responding to a structure fire. Dispatch engine nine. Grabbing a hose line. Forcing entry and then finding and extinguishing the fire. This is training. And it's where firefighters here at Station 8 and at every one of our 17 stations sharpens their skills and techniques. A look at how the training is building what we call muscle memory and the latest from around the district in this West Metro update. Jeffcom 911, what is the address of the emergency? On scene, side North. Responding to a structure fire in a two-story home, firefighters can see smoke as they arrive on scene. The first priority is life safety, so they have to quickly force entry to find and extinguish the fire and search for possible victims inside. So for this drill, it is designed to be a single family residence with a fire in one of the upper bedrooms. Uh, we're utilizing some of our newer technology. It's a TV screen that mimics fire as well as a smoke machine. So there should be some smoke. And then when the crews encounter the, the fire room, there's two different fire screens that they can uh, practice putting water on the fire. The crews running the simulation have practiced firefighting skills and training and responded to dozens of real fires where lives and property were at risk. Intent of this drill was just to allow our company officers a time to practice this with their crews. Oftentimes, um, I like to say the first five minutes of a residential structure fire is one of the most stressful times for an officer. There's a lot of decisions that they have to make and a lot of setup that they have to be in charge of with imperfect information. So this is ultimately just to allow the crews a chance to get to train with each other. I would much rather them uh, have a challenge here and figure out how to overcome it than have to have that in the real world. Repetition like this is what builds muscle memory. So when there's a real emergency and seconds count, crews can perform quickly and efficiently. A fire is one of those situations where adrenaline is pumping. And one thing we know about adrenaline is it decreases our ability to have good thoughts. So if we've practiced the way that we're supposed to be doing these things, your body goes back to what you practice. Uh, so in those high stress situations, you don't even have to think about what you need to do or how you need to do it, but just what you need to do. I'm going to search up here. Every one of our firefighters completes about 150 hours of training each and every year. That's everything from structure fires to wildland fires to auto extrication to emergency medical procedures, just to name a few. The majority of West Metro's calls are medical emergencies, and that's why beginning in January, we'll be adding a new ambulance or medic to our resources. Medic 8 will run out of Station 8, and right now the medic is being stocked with supplies for its debut. The crew will run their first call out of Station 8 on New Year's Day. Station 8 is home to our dive team, and two days before Thanksgiving, they were called to Roxborough when four teenagers fell through the ice. Bystanders were able to rescue three of the teenagers before firefighters arrived, but they could not reach a 14-year-old boy. West Metro divers found him under the ice and pulled him out. He was in critical condition and rushed to the nearest hospital. He passed away on Thanksgiving after two days in intensive care. The ice on the ponds and lakes along Colorado's front range at this time of year can be deceiving. It may look safe, but it can't be trusted. It's a real danger in Colorado because our, our ice doesn't stay frozen the entire entirety of the winter like it will in some other states. Uh, we have so many warm sunny days that we'll have a good sheet of ice one day and the very next day that sheet of ice will be unstable and somebody will fall through. Well ice thickness varies a lot and, and it's not going to be a consistent thickness all the way across the lake where it, it may seem fine as you approach from one side of the shore. The other side of the lake is going to be completely open water. We'll see patches where there's, there's no ice at all. And then you get everything in between, depending on currents, depending on weather, depending on what's underneath. Rocks will heat up, ice below, and then that'll melt faster than areas of just solid water. So you just don't know what's under the water, and you don't know how thick the ice is. It's, it's just dangerous to be out on the ice in any way, shape, or form. 
Here in the metro area, we've had a couple of snowstorms so far this winter, but in southeastern Colorado, it's been windy and very dry. And under these conditions, there is a real risk of wildfire. Grass and small plants in the area around Springfield and Baca County cured out months ago and are available to burn. Over the past couple of months, West Metro has had an engine and a crew of firefighters in Baca County stage its initial attack resources available to respond in case of a wildfire. These opportunities help our firefighters gain experience and skills that they can bring back to the district. And if West Metro should need help in the future, we would benefit from crews coming in from other districts to assist. No one saw this crash until two bicyclists were riding by on Morrison Road near Kipling and called 911. When firefighters arrived, they extricated the driver who had multiple injuries and transported him to a local hospital. It's believed he crashed sometime either late the night before he was found or early that morning. The car in the ditch was found shortly before 10 a.m. Whenever our crews go out on a call, they never think that they may be the ones needing assistance. But that's exactly what happened when a speeding stolen vehicle smashed into Medic 11, rolling the ambulance on its side. Dispatch, Medic 11, uh, we've been involved in a MVA, I believe LPD is on scene, but we are stuck. Ambulance has rolled. The calm voice on the radio came from the firefighter sitting in the driver's seat of this ambulance. Medic 11, okay, we'll get that started. Can you give me your location? Dispatcher, I believe we're at 14th and Reed. Uh, both of us in the ambulance are okay. Hit broadside and rolled after a speeding stolen vehicle went through a stop sign at a Lakewood intersection. Choppy, thank you. We were uh, heading non-emergent to a call at 21st and Wads. We were heading west on 14th prior to the accident. Brittany Lyman, West Metro Firefighter EMT, and Tom Narone, West Metro Firefighter Paramedic, had left Station 1 less than two minutes before the crash, with Brittany at the wheel and Tom riding in the passenger seat. And as we entered the intersection at 14th and Reed, I recall a Jeep traveling a high rate of speed, blowing through the stop sign, uh, colliding with us just behind Tom's door on the passenger side. A split second before and the vehicle would have smashed into the door where Tom was sitting. Instead, it hit just behind. We started sliding uh, and then everything kind of slowed down a little bit and then we started tipping over onto the driver's side. We slid to a 180 and then came to a stop and basically just tilted over. For the two firefighters, everything went into slow motion as medical equipment, supplies, and everything else went airborne. For both of us, it really slowed down after that point of impact when we started to spin into a 180. It was almost uh, movie-like how slow things moved flying through the cab. Everything lifted. It was pretty wild to see. With the ambulance on its side, they were able to unbuckle their seat belts and climb out through the passenger side. I climbed out first. Then Brittany climbed out after me. We hopped up on the box and they jumped down. It was it difficult to get out? No, not really. Okay. Neither of us were pinned or anything. So, and did you have any trouble getting out of your seat? No, I, uh, being a shorter person, Tom helped me get out the window, but we were both able to get out easily uh, before anybody got there on scene. Got two paramedics uh, with injuries. And with a few bumps and bruises, they were transported to the hospital to get checked out. Yeah, I had some whiplash, I think more so I saw it coming, so I tensed up. Um, and then Tom just, uh, he had a split eyebrow after we got out and uh, some swelling to his eyebrow. But thankful that we didn't have anything more serious. There were three people riding in the stolen vehicle. One had to be extricated from the wreckage. All three were taken by West Metro ambulances to local hospitals. All right, sir, we do have Medic 2 en route as an additional medic. They're en route emergent. Lakewood police have charged the driver, 20-year-old Armando Casillas of Denver, with vehicular assault, DUI, and aggravated motor vehicle theft. The two passengers have not been charged at this time. The police investigation is ongoing. Medic 11's crew is now driving a reserve ambulance, and this unit that was in the crash most likely will have to be replaced. That's because once it got back up on all four tires and brought here to West Metro's fleet facility, you could see damage that was not apparent at the crash scene. 
Not only the damage to the ambulance, but damage to the equipment and other items inside, including Tom's firefighting boots. His gear was inside this cabinet on the passenger side. With the steel shanks bent at a 90-degree angle, the boots are now souvenirs. Could have been a lot worse. After 19 weeks of training, West Metro welcomed 28 brand new firefighters to the district. With friends and family in the audience, West Metro Academy Class 2202 graduated on December 12th. The new firefighters took the oath of office and were sworn into their new positions. In keeping with West Metro tradition, their new badges were pinned on by a family member or friend. The recruits have their shift assignments and will begin their careers late this month. And finally, the holiday season is the time for giving. And West Metro Engine 2 and crew helped deliver a load of toys to Children's Hospital Colorado before Christmas. A long line of fire engines and other apparatus from all over the metro area stopped by to help brighten up the holidays for hospital patients spending that time away from home. And that's just a quick look at some of the things going on here around West Metro. For more information on the fire district or to get safety tips for home or work, visit our website, westmetrofire.org. And for breaking news and information, follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.